We've never seen water in our yard before. We weren't concerned about the back, back side because the water had never been there. But we live sandwiched between, there's a road and there's several houses on the hill. We got all of those rocks from that hill mm -hmm. down in our yard, across our patio. And we lost everything that we had downstairs. We, our daughter was killed in a car accident 42 years ago. And naturally you try to save everything that you can save mm -hmm. for memories. We lost everything that we had of her in, downstairs. And uh, we were blessed. Uh, we had about six inches of mud plus two feet of water. And uh, the Mennonites from Ohio, they come in and they give us two days' work and they clean the mud out. And they cut the sheetrock down. We had four rooms downstairs. They cut the sheetrock off about four or five feet up. We've never got to put that back. We, the carpet's never been replaced. In fact, we, uh, during the time that he broke his head, trying to do a little work outside, getting the rocks, step out. And so we're just in a mess downstairs. So. But we did horse, and a gentleman had come by and gave us, well, we paid him, but he gave us four days' work, and he cleaned it. Yard and got all the rocks out, but it's a rough road to hoe when you start trying to mow. The land is just bubbity and bubbity. You can't only really mow it, it's so bad. And we lost, we have lost over the years. Now, from other water coming our way, every time it would come our way, we'd lose a little more yard. And but that, this time we've lost about 15 or 20 feet of our yard. We've heard that a lot. Uh, uh, I'm her husband Burns Mo, mm -hmm. and she told you about everything. I ain't got much else to say, but if they would uh, work on that river, knock a curve off, when we bought the place, and said it pretty. Mm -hmm. Right, it was way over to the river. And that's filled up here and it all comes this way. Right. And if that had been cut off and took out, mm -hmm. them 11 and 12 houses below us would not have got washed off. Because it comes over this way mm -hmm. and then after it here and then it goes out straight across all them other houses that got flooded and washed off. And that would be the most thing to get for us. But like she said, we lost everything in the basement, but did not lose anything in the main living quarters. Yeah. But. Move over here. Hey, my name is Sharon White. I live in Benny's Branch. We lost two buildings and we lost our whole front yard. At the creek washed off even with our front porch posters. We can look straight down in. It used to be just a little creek you could just barely step across. Mm. Now it's almost 40 foot wide. So, and we can't even get a lawnmower around to our backyard now to mow or grass or anything. And then my son, his driveway, we got water come down this way and in front of us. It washed his whole driveway off. Then they put dream pipes back in, but they almost full again where the rocks and stuff washed down mm. again. And if they would put us in like a bridge that didn't have the drain pipe, like you know, where it could go straight under it, probably wouldn't be that bad. Day is the county who put the drain pipe Yes. In. And we lost our retaining wall where it held our yard. Mm -hmm. It's all gone. All right. Yes, I'm with her. Uh, well, she's a family. Yeah. What's your first name? Johnny Gibson. Nice to meet you, Johnny. All right, so thank you all for sharing. What we're going to do next um, is we're going to try and touch on a lighter note because generally when we talk to folks, we really like to hear about what they love about their homes. Most of y'all have lived here most of your lives, if not your entire life. Um, I know if somebody asks me what I love about my home, 
which is Bell County, Kentucky, I could go on for ages. So first, we'd just like to hear why you all love living here. What is wonderful about Buchanan County to you all? It's home. <laughs> it's like country. I mean, and there's not very much like uh, people stealing stuff and stuff like that around here. I mean, it's quiet neighborhoods and stuff, and we have really good neighbors and everything. So. Quiet and good neighborhoods. Like she said it's home. It's country folk. I mean, everyone treats everyone how they want to be treated. Uh, everyone knows everyone mostly because I mean, everyone's lived here for years and years. Mm -hmm. My, my family's been here for like eight generations. When my great great grandfather came here, he homesteaded like seven miles. He just homesteaded, wow. and he had a bunch of kids, and he just kept on. And so we've been here a long time. It's a very close to you with a bunch of people. That's good enough to come out and help you when you're in time of need. Mm -hmm. They don't say well. Neighbors got problems. Neighbor comes over and helps neighbors. And if it wasn't for the people themselves in most of these places for the flood, and most of you agree, if it wasn't for the neighbors at the time helping you, who would you have had to help you? Yeah. Nobody. Because it was neighbors helping neighbors, and it was people that cared, and they weren't worried about what was going to happen or what was going to, they were going to get out of it. They were there to help the people. And a lot of people in the county is really close about doing that, mm -hmm. and always has been. But the worst thing over her is they took her land. You don't, like, have, you don't want to live. Because they lose your house, and they say, you can't go back there. Oh, the county. The county is the county, taking the county has, No, they have told us. They took all the land. Either the floodway, the flood land, or something. But these houses have been there for the last hundred years. Mm -hmm. My grandfather lived in a house that my dad lived in and I lived in. But now you can't live there, they're saying. It's a floodplain. It's a floodway. I, I, guess well. that, I guess that's the worst thing, is, is they took their land. Do you know if that is from the Army Corps of Engineers coming down through the county? I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know where, I don't know where we've, talked, I don't know. we've talked to them before. They say the county tells you what's what. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, it's the county telling you. Yeah. You know, our county is 90% woods straight up and down mountains. We only got like 5 or 10% flat land. It's down next to the creek. Mm -hmm. If you take our land down next to the creek, where are we going? They have to move. We've got to leave the county. Right. That's just a simple fact. We've got to leave the county. There ain't no places to buy. There ain't no land to buy. So if you buy land, you're going you to be in the flood plain when you buy it. We all live next to the creek. So we, we got a major problem here. Mm -hmm. <coughs> a lot of our people on, on my creek, they've already left. They went to Roanoke mm -hmm. and they just moved out all over the country and uh, Abbott got a lot of people and, and, uh, and there ain't going to be nobody left in this county, honest to goodness. Well, in my family alone, five people, five people, have their, their houses is gone and they cannot move back and they have to leave. They've already left. They're not coming back. Mm -hmm. They didn't give them a choice. They didn't try to help them to see anything. And to me, if you have a pretty good sized bottom and you've got a hill and you can slope that hill and you can bring yourself up out of floodplain or floodway, but they're saying, no, you cannot go back. Period. End of discussion. And the register said, well, you can't build your land up because if you do, you're going to throw water over on somebody else's land. Well, how's that? There's nothing over there but the road. That's uh, that's 60 foot high. We're we're in the pickle here. We're we're in the back pickle. We we need something. I don't know what we need, but we we need something if we're gonna stay here. Have the floodplains um, affected anybody else? The fact that people aren't being allowed to settle back in the flood areas? I, I don't know about flatwood because I'm not familiar with that area. I know all about. It. The hurry flood because I lost out in the day. I know all about that. But I don't know how they're doing y'all or what. Really. I have five sisters. Are, are, are they telling y'all the same thing? I, we have received a letter 
seems like it was November prior to the flood that, and it was from Army Corps of Engineers stating that we were in the flood zone. So, but I've not contacted them. I've not talked to the Army Corps of Engineers to see how our property line, you know, if we're even allowed, if my brother is even allowed to put back a mobile home on the property. <laughs> see, that, that's the thing. I, I need to contact them because I don't know. I don't know if we can put a power pole back. I, but we did receive a letter stating that, um, I guess, the information to contact them, uh, maybe they were, would consider a purchase because we were in the flood zone. That's why we never could get insurance, flood insurance. My mother told me prior to her death year, she said, don't ever let your policy lapse because we would never get a policy back. And I paid that policy, kept it paid. Uh, nationwide insurance canceled the policy on us. And this is probably six or seven years before this flood. They canceled our policy because we were in the flood zone. They were no longer going to carry flood insurance on that property. So that's why we didn't have insurance. We couldn't, you know, they canceled us because we were in the flood zone. Mm -hmm. But I don't I don't even know if, you know, we are allowed to go back on the property. We've been talking to the building inspector and the county administrator, and they're the ones laying the law down to us. I mean, they're in charge of the county. Mm -hmm. If they don't give you a building permit, you can't get next to the back up. You sure can't put nothing on that land. Right. They, they condemned their land. Are you still being taxed? For that oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you get a tax You get a tax Oh yeah. Yeah, you get a tax You can pay tax on that land, but I can't uh, Unless use you it. want to give it to the county. They, they, told, they told me, the only thing you use that for, you might think you're a gardener. Or a park. You can have a park. Oh, recreation. Yeah. I forget that yeah. park that you can put there. And the county has, has offered that as a potential suggestion, right? Not a or I just want to make sure. That's the county. Okay. The Corps of Engineers, sir, we have met with them, this is five or six years now, back when they started talking about the 77 yeah. flood. Yeah. Those people, it's you talk to this guy, you talk to this guy, none of them can give you the same answer. I'm sorry. I'm not downing them. I'm just explaining telling now, you exactly how they do. Now, now these homes we're talking about losing her, her dad's home and her cousin's home. They was all scheduled to be raised by the court. But, uh, five but, years ago. Yeah, it was five years ago. And then they wait, they all were stopped, and then they ain't nothing to, ain't nothing and to raise now. And then he comes to you and says, there's nothing we can do for you. Your house is gone and your land's gone. Talk to your they county. just waited too long to do anything. Yes, well, I, isn't that what the ones like that was washed away if they put it back, it's got to be raised up to mm -hmm. that standard. Above the flood yeah, line. Uh, yeah, you know, to the, you know. Right, but see, they're not letting us go back to build it up. They're not. No, you can't. Uh, if I ask them, can I put my put this house back here, uh, how tall do I have to put it up? What do I have to do? You can't go back. No, There's no flood going back. That's it. No. That's the thing. Know. So, and none of none of them have. None of my family's got to go back. Not any of them. I had one cousin and his wife live in a shack up until this February. I'm telling you, it was like a small outbuilding with three little rooms in it. That a lady, her mother had it, and she said, I'll let you live there as long as you have to. I mean, that's, that's it. It was washed away this past flood. No, they were hurling. Oh, in the hurling flood. Hurling flood. Yes. Did they seek any of the funding from the state? Of course. And did they get any of it? Yeah, but that only came this past year. Yeah. <laughs> so you stayed where you could stay, whatever you could do. Why doesn't the county even have a place to put all these people in the disaster came? Mm -hmm. We're going to. This get county to has plenty enough bit. money to have done that mm -hmm. to put these people up. Yeah. someplace especially the homes that was completely washed away and had nothing but you know who they depended on people with donations mm -hmm. that don't people that donated stuff and donated money is where those people got help from yeah i heard that a lot but, but now i believe in this would have got they would have been i know at least one would have could have went back couldn't they James King. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They were going to let him. He had done brought, bought his camp 
a trailer and everything and was ready. But he he was going to have to be up so high on one end. He decided, no, I don't want it up that high. And he decided to move it away. He had done brought it and had it parked across the road. They had just <coughs> put electricity up to him, back up to uh -huh. him. Temporary electricity, yeah. yeah. And they were going to let him do it. They would have let him. They would have let him if they wanted to do it there. But the in Dismal Creek, let's just make sure that we can, like, know that maybe across communities there are challenges that aren't the right. same. But in but Dismal Creek, you know that, examples. Uh, but at that moment now, maybe then later, they might not have. My sister, our sister, lost her home completely, everything. Yeah. I don't know if they would have let her, I don't know if she tried to get it. It, it, she just lost everything. This is in the, the 2022 flood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if they would have let her. I don't know if they even tried to see if they could have went back there and if they would have let her. Mm -hmm. But if she did, she would have had to been. It would have had to be in raised flood stage. I don't know. You talking about that creek field? We got we got our creek running through houses right now. Still yeah, up. So yeah. creek just runs through houses. You got a whole house there that's fell in and the creek running through it. And they haven't touched the haven't touched the creek channel. They have not touched it. It's, it's full, it's like you said, it's full. Everything. So now if we get like two, three inches rain, poof, we got another flood. Yeah, I'm not if because we've had to leave since that flood we've had to leave we've had to leave go to the motel. Mm. All right. Well, the problem of that they won't let you get in the creek. No. 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 We've heard about that a lot. They won't let you get in the creek. The if they channel that up far over from where we are, the water would went straight down instead of going over into these 12 houses. Mm -hmm. Can you say, we, this, my experience when we say they, we, we don't, we have to say who they is. So who, who in your mind is they who won't let you in the creek? Okay, but. Environmental. Environmental. Oh, man. Yep. Us. Me. No. <laughs> no, I hear it. That's about the uh, crawl down. We've Frank done. Horn told us in a meeting, there are no way that anybody's going to get in that river. So this, I'm glad you said who it was because we heard this a lot. We heard this time and time again. So what did we do? We, we called um, about every state and federal agency you can call. Uh, to figure out what the situation was and to sum it up, and this is very frustrating, uh, the creeks could have been repaired in the immediate aftermath of the flood because there is uh, an exemption in the case of human danger, right? If, the, if it's going to flood and hurt people, the crawdads don't matter as much. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, there was a time limit on that and we are now past the time limit so there are protections against the crawdads again. So essentially what happened is there was a little miscommunication and the window for actually repairing the creeks and clearing them out has now closed. And we are trying to figure out what we can do with that. What they, it sounds to me what they like is the crawdads and the mussels better than the people. Yeah, it's it. <laughs> Well, as, I'll let you know that they, again, like when we can be specific about who they are, we can name how to change some things. And, and our organization has historically fought for protection of those types of things. But we're here. Craig is not here. No. We're here because we think it's not a realistic barrier to fixing your creeks and making your place safer and livable for you. Exactly. And we want to figure out how to make sure that whoever is telling you that is is actually being truthful with you and we want to work with you to make sure that a crawfish doesn't kick you off the place you've lived your whole life right we right. don't think that's fair well another right. thing is they say it's a trout stream see it's a trout stream but behind our house uh -huh. personally we would have got a dozer in there and push some of them rocks up against our bank to keep from losing the dirt you know, but no, it's a trout stream. They won't let nothing. They said, they'll put you in jail if they get you put something in there. Yeah. And I, I do believe at some point we need to ask the question, 
if a stream is filled up with rocks and dirt and twigs, is it even a good habitat for trout and crawdads? Mm -hmm. Are they they're, still, they're still stalking me. Yeah. I want to hear from these folks too, just about, you talk about why you love living here, but I'm What is called the Virginia Flood Preparedness Act. And it has millions of dollars. When I talk about how much money, it has millions of dollars to help communities do flood preparedness, mitigation work. So to help fix the creeks, help think about floodplain. Buchanan County applied for that. They received almost $400,000 to do this plan. When we go out to the community and we tell folks, your county, your county administrator, has this funding, is supposed to be developing a flood plan. I think your county lawyer is the person who is the designated flood planner. Um, do you all know that your county has that money? Do you know that they're actively developing flood plans? Go ahead, Angela. I have a question. Would the bridge that was six miles up Dismal River be could, they con could that be considered for repair with that funding that you're speaking of? There was a tunnel yes. and a bridge at Crystal Walk. If you all know where that location is, you know, why would father and mother on the property there with the three trailers on the lot right before you get to yeah. that church? Right. Okay, that's the why I'm here. Christine. Everything was down. But would that bridge uh, be Walk? available to repair because they still they had, they're not going to fix the bridge back, are they? Well, I don't know. I talked to some uh, office there, and as far as they know, they ain't been promised to put it back. And the only way they got to get out of there, is they, go all the way around. They got to go all yeah. the way around the mountain. So that was my question. And if they live just like a quarter of a mile yeah. that way, they got to go miles around to get out of there. So would that bridge be considered squad or something for repair under that funding? I want to be really clear with you what the fund is for and what your county has applied for, and I'll send out the information. I think we asked folks for their emails. It's all public. It's, it's okay. there. It's for the county to plan how to get ahead of this. So if, 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 if I were a citizen and I found out that my county has money to be planning about how to, to support folks, I would be showing up at the county administrator, I would be showing up at the county board of supervisor meetings, and I would be like, this bridge is a lifeline to myself and to my neighbors. Is this included in your flood plan? If not, why not? That is the best I can offer you. I can tell you where to go, who to talk to, that they have it. I don't know what they're planning on doing with it. I, that part of it isn't public. I can tell you what they applied for. Do, do they plan on using it to clean out the creeks with the houses in the middle of the sea? Craig Horn is the person who I would go to and ask. Um, I can tell you what they're doing is developing a plan to be able to go after more money. There is millions of dollars available to them once they get that plan done to go after more money. It's whatever will be in their plan is what they will apply for money for, and that is where the money will go. And so I'm letting you all know so that you know it's happening. This is a real life, a real opportunity for you to engage with local folks. We are tracking it. We're willing to give you everything you need to go with you. Um, Amanda can go with you. This is why we hired her at our organization because she lives in Taswell. She's close to y'all. She can be here and can be available. Um, Taryn has offered the same thing, has helped to develop it. We have the capacity. We get paid to do this. But we want to be open and transparent with you. Because we don't hear from many people saying that the county is doing that, and that's a shame. Mm -hmm. But I want to. So now that's just one topic we want to talk about, and I don't want to dominate. I just happen to know a lot about that because I've been following it more closely than my colleagues. Well, how do we find out about anything? I would. I would hope. Gonna, you're. You're my. You're going to be my lady. I'm telling you. I mean, I'm tired of going to the administrator. I'm tired of going to the the county. And I'm when I get up to ask questions. Ask your supervisor. My supervisor doesn't talk to the people in Hurley right now. I'm sorry. Who's your supervisor? Trey Atkins. Trey Atkins. Our so he doesn't do much talking right now. That's his personal problems or whatever he's got. That's fine. 
But when I go somewhere to ask a question and they just give me run around, well, you need to ask this one, you need to ask the building, nobody gives me the same answer. So my to go person now will be you and you will go ask them for I, me. I, I, I heard the board of supervisors talking about that bridge. Yes. Last nice meeting we was at. Yes. That, that bridge was heavily discussed. Because the, the gentleman was really nice <laughs> trying to get questions right. in about it. And they, they cut him up. They I mean, shut him they, down like he wouldn't give me that. He didn't get satisfaction, but he did. He did, really he, he he did get up and ask several times. He said, wait, let me explain to you. That's and how I know about it. That's how we were there. But they said these people had to come from all around the world to yes, get out of there. they sure did. And they brought up, you know, somebody but got sick. And how sick do we know where to go to if there is nobody that's giving you any answers? Yes. Right? Yes. And that's frustrating. That's right and the answer here is... You come to us. I have business cards as well. Good deal. You come to us, and we will help you out in that way. We're here let, let, let me tell you this. Y'all are the fifth bunch of people that me and my husband's been around. To community listening sessions like this? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're the fifth bunch of people. The other four contacted them, called them, called them, called them, and called them. Having your thing. Have others had that experience where a lot of folks have come to you and had these types of conversations or? Have you all not had no. meetings no. in Whitewood? No. We no. We've had the one in Whitewood. The last one we went to was the one in Whitewood. Mm -hmm. We had the RAS people wherever at the high school. That's the one I went to last. We went, last we went, we went, we went to them. I tried happened. to call them. I tried to call the lady that yeah. Rebecca Lowe. Yes, we I'm not sure who yeah. she's with anymore because she really can't tell me except she has talked to her boss about everything. And then we had one local people here that came and had us sign forms so they could move the debris out of the creek, just the houses. Never heard from them again. They never showed up to do that work or? No. We've not saw any of these people back. Yeah. And we've been going through this since 2021 when they first started, and it was right around January or February of 2022 when they started having the meetings after they cleaned up a few things in the road, got the electricity back, and the water. Well, we got the rest of it is still like it was. We got a veterinary veteran, they call him, mm -hmm. and he lives above us, mm -hmm. and his bridge got washed off. And they didn't put no bridge back for him or nothing because he was a single home across the creek and he can't even walk. The ambulances had to call the fire trucks in to run the ladder across the creek to carry him across that ladder to get him out of there. Is this a different bridge story or the same? These are. This is a big issue yeah. with private driveway bridges where the where VDOT is saying this is private property and we can't help you yeah. and the available funds from the state are saying this isn't a house or a structure. So our money can't be used for that. Yeah. It's a big gap. And I'll let you know the money. Go ahead, sir. Uh, you see, that washed a lot of rock and backed about against my fence when it cut off an hill, mm -hmm. piled up, and and uh, I went and uh, called the, well, I went to the State Department up here and asked them about uh, if a state, it didn't state road, the age of it, and about cleaning that up, if they could clean that up. He said, well, I guess it's our job, mm. but said, you'll be the last one on the totem pole. That was VDOT, right? VDOT right, state. Right, right. The one right over, with, you know, up there, uh, just before you came out. Mm -hmm. That's where he was at. And uh, so I hired a fellow to move it with a, Wheel bar and shovels, or I don't know, a couple hundred feet <laughs> out of there. And, and so, and I called a supervisor for uh, Al Hurry. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, I will come and look at it. Yeah. And uh, if he come, I never didn't know. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I can't say he never come to look at it. Right. But if he did, he didn't contact me. Right. And I didn't get no help, so we paid for getting it out ourselves. So, and, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm, um, I'm going to steer this conversation a little bit because you all have already touched on some of the immediate needs, clearing out the waterways, bridge repair, 
um, as well as some of the long-term development needs, like needing a safe space for people to go to that can house folks uh, if slash when this happens again. So what I'd like to ask now is, in addition to those, when you think of short-term and longer-term development needs, things that can help with flooding, things that can help with community development, what do you all think of? What do you think the county needs? Channel River. Channel River. Where it's filled up here, and if it helps me, it'll help the neighbor. Okay. That's what we'll end her with. Right. Yeah, definitely. Right. Laura? Yeah, I will volunteer with like some of like the river cleanups out here and unfortunately like a lot of the cleanups is just left up to just volunteer work and I think that there needs to be something put in consistently. Um, I've seen some research in other counties that do that, that have, they pay people to come in and keep the rivers cleaned out on a consistent basis so that it's not all piling up and then when it does flood, it's washing all down right there before Walmart and it, it proposes a risk. I remember seeing like there was like methane tanks that they had to like release out and, mm. and different things that wash up there and so um, definitely just I think a lot of preventative um, measures. Yeah. Have you approached the county supervisors with that idea? Yeah. And what was the barrier? The ones that you expressed, you know. All right. Um, and I did, I think I have a question for Robert. Mm -hmm. um, did you say um, that a lot of the money for this preparedness, did they come out of the Virginia Community Flood Preparedness Fund? Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the things that we've been talking about in our class is how the governor wants to remove from Reggie, which is like the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, mm -hmm. um, and that's what funds that fund. And so moving it would remove all that. Like if we leave that, Virginia leaves that fund, all that money is gone for areas like that. And I think that's really concerning that that's, you know, been on the table recently. It is on the table to get rid of. It's there. It's still there, and yeah. it still has millions of mm -hmm. dollars, and yes, sir. Uh, excuse me. I saw in a paper no later than this week, and maybe last week too, where there's 11, and they had 11 million and some dollars for stuff like this, mm -hmm. and they only had used 3 million and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, I think at this point, I got updated figures from the S Department of Social Services, and it up, it's up to about 4.4 million they've handed out to 44 families. Yeah. But yes, there is still a great deal of money uh, that hasn't been allocated. One of the difficulties there is that that money is only for people who were impacted by the 2021 Hurley flood. So something that we are possibly interested in, if it's possible, is to have that, is to have that restriction removed and have folks like yourselves who are impacted in Whitewood be able to access that money. Let me add just a little clarity. So Delegate Moorfield is the person who went and fought for that fund and was successful in getting that funding. He took it from this other fund that we're talking about. Um, he is aware that there is still a, a good portion of that money that is just sitting there. Um, and he went ahead and asked for more money, another $11 million. The House, the Virginia House, put in a, a, a $6 million but there's a good chance that Virginia might not pass a budget this year, and that means folks who are impacted by the most recent floods would not have access to any funding. So I've reached out to Delegate Moorfield. He is doing everything he can to try, but I mean, I personally am still skeptical of whether or not folks or Virginia politicians are going to actually be able to make a deal. But there is, an opportunity for the most recent victims to get access to six million dollars. Um, if there's no budget that passes, it will still take an act of the General Assembly to open that money up to the most recent victims who cause of how the language it, it, they, it is it's it's a law, and the law says only 2021 victims can can get funding right now, but. So I would encourage you to reach out to Delegate Moorfield. I think well, we have, we're gonna to get to it later on, we have folks who you should call right now and say, pass a budget and make sure that there that we can get money. Sorry to jump ahead. I the only thing, excuse me, the only thing that me and my wife is interested in, 
half wise. Just channel that river behind me. And the fund won't pay for that. No, it won't pay to build a bridge. It will only pay, sorry. I was going to say, but that's good advocacy to have for other agencies and other government entities who can. It won't even help us, but it'll help the neighbors down the Right. And, well, I say it won't do it, but there is nothing that says they can't set it up to do those things. But they, that takes people telling them this is what they want, and it takes you telling them to more So you're, you're saying that we need a bunch of people. These people need to come out in groves instead of a handful of life. We right. Are. Yeah, that's the problem. We, we need to start going. And if you don't get everybody together, then, and this is just a metaphor, Tom, Dick, or Harry over here, I, well, I don't mind. It doesn't matter to me. But to you, me, and everybody else, it matters. But we need more people to let them know where we're standing. Everywhere we go, it's the same thing. You've got a handful of people, but there are also a lot of people that work in this county, and the first thing they say is, well, I can't say much, I'll lose my job. Mm -hmm. Now, how yeah. many people heard that? That's I, true. I would go to the meeting, but, oh, no, I work for the county, or I work for the school, I, I'll lose my job. That is a disgraceful thing to have tell somebody that's lost everything yeah. that they can't open their mouth to get help. And that, and that's a lot of that you're hearing, a lot of it. And that's a bad thing. And and with the money that, sir, that you and like y'all said, we what we have left, it is a, it's a lot of money left. But if you would just make a trip up Guessy's for it, they could probably spend it all. Yeah. There is people that have not got paid not one dime. There's a lot of beautiful homes that were destroyed. They, had they have not yet. got one dime. But my uh, neighbor, she drowned, and she had two beautiful homes there. But, she drowned, and, and her daughter, they won't give her daughter not one penny of that money. But it, but it fell to her. Yeah. But because the way it was written up or whatever, she, they're not going to get anything for that. Yeah. And it's side beside her house. Yeah. I mean, her mother lived... 20 feet from her. Yeah. Delegate Morfield said the exact same thing to me. Why he went and got more money, even though all the money hasn't been spent. He said they could use it. They need it. Yeah, we, I mean, it needs to be done up, even at our place. Those people need to pray for their homes. And they've not got a dime. Yeah. 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 Robert and I can send emails and call and go to offices and say, you all need to do this. And then we leave and they say, well, those annoying people are gone, the end. That's right. That's why we need community members and that's why it's so important that all of you all came out today and have been calling us and emailing us and contacting us. So we can let people but know. But you know, if Mike had read in the paper, probably nobody else where we live knows about it. So y'all didn't get a letter in the mail? No. Okay. No, just in the paper. No, just we in the paper. paper. And actually, actually, we found it on the back side of the paper. That's what we went and told her we knew about it. We found the front page of the paper. That's all we could afford was the back side of the paper. But I mean, you know, why doesn't the county put something and say, hey, there's going to be a meeting for this? They can afford it. I reached, I'll be, I'm an honest person. I mean, I, we have nothing to win or to lose by being here working with you. Right. So I will tell you, to your, and I'll have to show you the emails. I've reached out to Greg Horn twice, told him we were having this meeting. We have um, money to, to, to do a different project, which I'm happy to talk about. It's not going to do flooding exactly, but it's a little bit different. Amanda and I was helping with, and I said, hey, Craig, we have this money. We want to help folks who are in Buchanan County who have been impacted, and I haven't heard from him. Now, I don't know if he's Why super busy. Why did this meeting? And all the, that doesn't surprise me. I'll add on to Robert's honesty. I have emailed and called every supervisor in this county, and I have not heard back. You won't hear it from Craig home. He's my name. But, I know it. It's not, it, that's the problem. But yeah. the people that live here don't understand that they have to come out and, right. and get everybody yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, Ruby. Like uh, uh, my husband was telling them about getting the fixed uh, with the cemetery bridge. Yes. They do that now. They will do that if it's involved with a cemetery. You know, they will do it. But if that had been our bridge that went over to our house, tough luck. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have picked us up out of the creek, mm. you know. 
That's so our neighbor right there. We have to go across the bridge, too. He still has a stack of sand and tied his house in his front yard. You see, all these people, and the dream heights, they, go they don't live in the Flutter. They don't know what it is. I mean, you can, it might be sticking out that much for the But I, I'm thankful that they've done that yeah. because that's our family that's cemetery. Right. And they did. But they they will. They will go. But that's that's it now. They will do anything about if it's a damage to a cemetery. It's if it's damage. something like a, an entrance or something like that. It's they will. Great. Oh, they should fix that. They'll have 10 grades. If you have 9 grades, they won't do nothing. I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know that it was. That, that was in the paper. Yeah, you got to have 10 grades. I didn't know that. You got to have 10 grades. I didn't know that. 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 I do want to bring us back to the short and long term development needs. You mentioned rerouting, rechanneling the river. Right. What do other people think? What, when we have groups that are looking at getting funding for projects, things that could help. Grundy Van Sant, Whitewood, Pilgrim's Knob, what sort of work is needed to help make sure this doesn't happen as badly in the future? What would you like to see go towards your community development? Clean the well, creek. Like clean the creek. You've got to, you've got to clean. You've got to get a, a waterway. That's, that's the most important thing. Yeah. Is, is like he said, if you don't have a waterway where it's all filled up over the years because they were saying you can't get in the creek. When my dad, years ago when I was small, they got a dozer, they put some on this side of that van, they put some on this side and they ditched the creek out and it helped. Mm -hmm. And for years it did help. It even helped even in the 77 flood because people did it. Mm -hmm. But like he said, to, to, the, to the main creeks are ditched and deeper at my house, it's level with the road. If it rains two inches, it's running down the main road. It just, it just goes back to the terrain we're in and our state hollers. We get 10 inches of rain in two hours, we have had it. There's that's why y'all are. hollers come out and trees fall in. That's why you are. Hundreds of trees are fell in. That's why you are. And the main thing we can do is channel that main creek and hope for the best. And something else could help, like if people would clean up around their house. At that, yes, like ma'am. Our neighbor, yes. his car came down the creek, got stuck on the tree, and that's what threw the water over on us and washed our wow. uh, yard off. And, and you have a lot of, you have a lot of car, yeah. junk cars and stuff that's beside the road mm -hmm. that, that actually piled up everywhere where we live. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of them. I mean, <laughs> This guy, well, they got that. People car say, okay, I have, they I have the neighbor yard and left it. Cars, tires. So how yeah, tires. Most of, mostly it's a lot of cars and trucks. We've seen some so of our neighbors so much the creek. So how do you guys want to see that upon, right? Because it's going to have private property. So I guess like in terms of a short term or long term um, goal for that, would you want to see that people are um, maybe informed or recommended by the county to keep their property clean. Or? Yes, okay. that would be, yes, that should be, and That'd it should be great. that shouldn't be beside the road. I mean, yeah. you've got vehicles. There well, are people that got that one them. guy. He's got like 20 cars around his house. Already. He's in the middle of a junkyard. And now, and now he's piling his vehicles up beside the road. Right beside the road again. He's basically got a junkyard there. And basically, and the, the little man the over of it. from him got flooded because of that. But you can't because get our supervisor to ever hold for nothing like that. Oh, my Lord, the world would end tomorrow. <laughs> so, but in the past, ordinance like that. Let me yeah, ask. That's my, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, but there could, there's money that could incentivize those folks, right. right? And then that might be the solution, but the county has to go and fight for that money. And go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, I was going to ask a slightly different question, which is when you look at your neighbors and you look at the folks on your street, what aid is needed? So we've talked about um, working to clear out the waterways. Uh, we've talked a little bit about, quite frankly, needing to help connect with agencies and supervisors and, and be a voice to make sure everybody's voice is being heard. But besides that, what, at what age do people need immediate help still with food, clothing, and water? Do people need boots on the ground to help them clean up around their houses? Do people need someone to help give them direction? and accompany them to different to different meetings, maybe with the Board of Supervisors. What aid is needed in y'all's neck of the woods? 
Well, in our neighborhood, the neighbors you then go, they got more stuff. Yeah. We don't even have it here. Yeah. That's we don't have so many neighbors there. Most of them are already laying away. Once one house, one big house, right below us, over in the neighbor's yard. Mm -hmm. Across the road. Who's across the road? And the vehicles had to pass it on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. So we, they tore it up and moved it. Mm -hmm. There, there's some people that still need help that lived in their father's and mother's homes and wasn't in their name, that they live in still other places or renting. And I'm sure that some of those people, if they were approached and helped in a way that they would know they could get help, that would help because some of them didn't know how to go get anything. And they, they didn't get that, they got. I guess gift cards and things that they could go to Walmart and help with. But once all that was gone from what they did get, they sort of just said, that's it. Because they were told, you, you, you don't own this. So to me, those people need more help to be able, someone to, to lean them away to help themselves. But they can't help themselves if they don't have a place or a home to begin with. Mm -hmm. So we yes. have a lot of elderly people in our holler, and they can't get out. And most of them is really sick and stuff, so they can't get help. I mean, so let me ask: um, you all heard about this through the paper, through our letters. Um, some we did some door knocking, going directly door to door in the impacted neighborhoods. What? How do you all think? What do you all think is the best way for us to be reaching these folks? Because if we haven't reached them yet, so what should we be doing differently to make sure that more folks know about us as a resource? Facebook page. Facebook? Mm -hmm. um, is there a particular page for the county already that people look at? Facebook's good, but like she said, your elderly people that need it the most. Most of them don't want to have a YouTube Would you internet. go up and down the hall or with us knocking on doors? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, a lot of people would. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've done it before. We can help yeah. people where we live. I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll see what we can get done. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, the elderly, mm -hmm. like she said, they're not going to be able to do that. They're not going to know mm -hmm. that. You know. yeah. Well, that's a relief for us because we want to do more door knocking. <laughs> We've been all over the county, like trying to get to know community members and connect with them. And the fact that you guys are even saying you want to do that with us. Did you go to Watwood? No, I did not. I've been to Watwood, yes. Okay, then nobody came to Hurley. Because if they had come to Hurley, somebody would have said, "Hey, did we? Hey, Rita, Mike." So and so came by. You need to get in touch with him. Mm -hmm. Hurley, we tell everybody, and everybody tells everybody else over there. Mm -hmm. That's the only way they can communicate. Is somebody comes by and one or two, and then we call them or we go by and say, mm -hmm. "Hey, there's going to be a meeting." Wow. Yeah, you can like post it in our post office. They got mm -hmm. a little bulletin board. Mm -hmm. That's it. They post place. stuff up on. Do you have a meeting place at Hurley's, or a church, or a place that people can get? We have a little gymnasium at Hurley. We can meet there. We can meet there at the gym. It's oh, a it central location. Yes, it is. It's, it's, it's a central location. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that done by the, the school board oversees that, or is that the supervisor? Supervisor. Oh, okay. So the county with oh. us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the post office. Sorry, if y'all are moving quick, I'm trying to make sure. Lots of us are taking notes, but it's good if, if we make sure we catch it. And then there's a post office. Mm -hmm. post office. Um, did we go to Hurley? We did go to Hurley. And we and, and we left things on doors, right, in Hurley? Yes. Um, so we happened to Hurley, but the Hurley flood happened before. We only started our work in this area last October. So Hurley happened before that. And I will say, when we've gone in the Whitewood Pilgrim's Knob area, Word of mouth has been huge. We knock on a door and somebody That's says, great. I'm going to call my cousin and my aunt. Here are the addresses. Go there. And it really is an amazingly powerful way to reach people. And that's why. And then we recognized that we weren't getting enough. So we sent out 100 plus. How many letters did we send out? Oh, we sent out like 320. Letters, letters. in the mail. So that like we paid for the postage and printed those because we were like, folks. And we uh, part of it is uh, you get it today. This is an update. But we put. We recognize, like we put the eligibility for the, the fund, we recognize that folks may not have the internet or this isn't good enough, so we'll put QR code. So we're open to hearing how to do it better and we're telling you we're gonna show up and knock on doors with you too. Um, but we, we, we have we, tried our very best 
But the reality is, even if we tried our very best, getting folks into this room to talk is still the hardest thing in the world. Yes, it is. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, but it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. But like I said, if you work for the county, or you work for the school, or this or that, if they say something that's not appealing to the other people, they're afraid. Yeah. That's exactly if, the problem. If, if you come up against this for you think the flood happened yesterday? Yes. They had been one house removed. Mm -hmm. Houses just sitting there falling in. Mm -hmm. Right beside other people, I mean, it, 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 it's perfect. We haven't had the first house removed. Or nothing. Oh. Or anything. The only thing that's been done up against this fort is the road was put back. The power poles were put back. The power poles were put back. That's it. And the water. Everything else is the Creeks same. run through houses. They've not done not one, nothing. And we've talked to Craig. We've talked to him several I times. I have talked. I've talked to so many people and so many people. They made us fill out so many forms yeah. to try to get a house tour down. We got to get a notarized form. Yeah. We got to sign this and give permission. Then they come out with another form. We just turned it in today. And uh, I guess probably tomorrow we'll have to another form. They just form us to death. I don't Are know they, what they want. I, it's bureaucratic. It is not going to get any easier. I'm not making you, like, the funding that the state is going to give you is not going to be, uh, if you sign one thing, you're going to get money. There you, there are, if you read it and we can give it to you, there are ways that you can prove ownership even if you don't have a deed, there are accommodations. But is someone helping you navigate that? Is someone your contact and saying, we will, we will walk you through this step by step by step? And I hear you say, no, they're not doing that. No, okay. no. We, maybe we can depend on you all. <laughs> the These group who can, I will vouch for them. Ever since the first day they came to my place where I work, place of business, asked if they could speak to me. Thank you all. Because at that point, there had not been in, no reach out, no help, nothing. Like she said, once the $200 gift card was gone, or the $550, I think, American Red Cross give us debit card was gone that was it it was gone everything was gone until you all came and spoke with me and every time they text me or call me or i text them they reply they will reply this group so you can depend on and the, the terrence people. girl sam's yes. they step up in a big way too so yeah sam's will um step up and we can help sometimes with resources and things but also with Virginia organizing, because listening to you all talk, it sounds like you all know what you need, but people aren't responding. Mm -hmm. And that's where an organization like Virginia Organizing would come in, get everybody together, because there's power in numbers, and like force a response from, from the people that are supposed to be represented. Well, in, in our neighborhood, all the homes that was destroyed, and being tore down. See, we've not had any. And I don't know who tore them down. Their one little house is sitting right down there, and nobody's touched it. And we were told that Jewel Smokeless is doing the grading and the flattening it out and stuff. And they've been down there several weeks of working, and they've got the right hand side looking real good. real good but now we're starting on the left hand side but now we were told by one of the operators it's your smokeless paying for it. it's paying for them wow. they said they want to do something for the community that, that makes sense and, that makes and, and, sense. and, and they're doing it. They're, i mean they've got the right side and i was told one day this week that uh, when they get finished they're going to sew it all in grass and we've got a little park in our neighborhood mm. and said this one put a fence back up it got more stock. Mm -hmm. And we're my neighbor said she was really happy to do that. And they say we're not going to separate that. her and that's where we heard our grandkids too. Mm -hmm. But see, there you go back, it's yes, the neighbors, it's the people, mm -hmm. the helping people. Mm -hmm. It's not really this the county, quite, it's not really the state. I mean, it's, it's nobody to get answers from yeah. from the county or somebody that can keep help. Yeah, so, that's, that's, that's amazing that Joel's doing that. Yeah, they, uh, I, I've talked to him down there and uh, there are two of them. One to run the escalator and one to run the back up. And then they've done excellent work. And they've got, my wife said, they've done the right side, which looks real good. Excellent. 
But the left side is where the most of the house is. Got washed off from? Now they're working dressing that. I asked him one that runs the escalator, either he took yesterday, yeah. How far up that way was it going to come? So he said we're going to come all the way. That's, that's amazing. So I have a question though. With the houses that we have over there, I mean they're falling down, they mold, the black mold you go by. Right. You can, is that not a health hazard that they can actually have them have to come in and tear that down? I mean that's a health hazard because black mold dries. Black mold flies when the wind blows. We have neighbors that has lung cancer. He cannot even sit out on his porch or on his patio. Is there not something in The your fund, house? with the property owner's permission, the fund would probably pay to, um, to demolish those homes. That takes, the onus is on the property owner to see that support. Uh, but JF wouldn't do it. I don't know. Maybe the property yeah. owner would do it and just hasn't been asked or doesn't know. Like they don't want to pay for the cost of it. Of it. See, we, we just, like he said, we just turned in. We turned in all these forms. Yeah. But we're still, we're still just waiting. They just not in the morning. Yeah, it just keeps telling me, okay, we need this, we need that. To me, it doesn't matter if the, if the homeowner was paid for those homes by the state, which they bought them out. We wanted to move the way. So then it could be an army court So, so it could, they could be torn down. I just want to make sure we're not trying to talk over each other, though, because it's Yeah, but thank you so I am, I am going to steer the conversation again because it's, it's past 6.30. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to Robert um, to talk about one of the projects we're, we're trying to start. Then I'm going to go over what is on the back of the information packet I handed out. Um, and after that, uh, I will be hanging around. Some of the organizers will be hanging around for as long as you all need to talk to us a little bit more. Yeah. So I know somebody had mentioned, and I'm sorry, I'm going to forget who, needing uh, a safe area for people to go to and stay at. And I'll pass it to you. Yeah, before I talk about that, I, I also want to address this playground issue. And there's an opportunity to think that Amanda might be able to immediately do. So we're really used to navigating both federal and state funding opportunities. And we can write grants and get money out. So one of those opportunities that we work with Virginia Energy, who is the state energy office. It used to be called DMME, Department of Mines, Mineral, and Energy, but now the Virginia Energy. They got funding from the federal government to help communities um, think about when a flood or some event happens and you lose power in your community, how can you build a, a space with solar power that doesn't lose power and put a solar panels and what's, a, a, frankly, a big old battery on that building so that you always have power at that site. So we have money not to buy a solar power, to buy the solar, but to work with communities to figure out where you could put that type of thing. And then we know that there's a bunch of money out there to then go buy that stuff. And at Voices, our organization has a solar finance fund. So we actually have money and a mechanism to, to, to work with communities to buy it. But so that project is going to be kicking off soon. Amanda's coming on board to help us think about the Cannon and Caswell counties and how to do that. But that's a real project that folks are interested in. It takes folks being interested in saying the gym or the church or the post office or this place. Because we don't know where, in the time of emergency, where folks can actually gather. And um, we don't, we need, we need, we we don't need your county's permission to work with you to do this, but we do need leadership of some sort so, to, so we can go back and say these are the first. But the first thing we'll do is, is if that's one project, separate to all the other things we've talked about, that we, that we do have the ability to, to continue to think about. So I want to put that on the table. The other one, and this gets to the playground and the parks, and this is a harder lift. I don't, we don't have this money, but we're, we've applied for this money and we've gotten it before is the Amler Grant, which is the Abandoned Mine Land Economic Revitalization Grant. And what it does is it provides communities access to funding. It has to be near a mining feature, but you live 
in the coal fields, so that's pretty easy for us to find. Looking for uh, think, about a quarter mile yeah. from a abandoned mine feature. That will pay for playgrounds. We've used it to play for playgrounds. We've well, used there's it. some mines right, uh, right above us uh -huh. that busted out and went across the road and drowned a girl, and she's gone now. Yeah. I mean, the mines is right there. Yeah. They were all my roundup. Yeah. There's one up in our holler. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm saying it, it, we, the, the problem with that one is the MME or Virginia Energy it is, has moved beyond funding playgrounds. Mm -hmm. It's harder to convince them for playgrounds and that type of thing, but if we can get you to talk to Delegate Warfield, to talk to, Del to Senator Hatworth, and you can tell them we need our playground back because our babies need a place to play, mm -hmm. and it's not fair that it got washed away and no one's going to do anything mm -hmm. about it. We can put pressure. Yeah, but so those are two opportunities that we're already committed that we we've helped. If you go to Daint, we've we've helped them build bike trails, um, a campground. If you go to where have you helped uh, folks get them? Uh, down in Scott County at Miller's Yard. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so, anyways, we have direct experience with with those grants. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll close out with that, and we we're not going to let y'all go anywhere because. This energizes us, and I, when I tell you there are billions of dollars out in the world right now to be taken by communities who are organizing themselves to take it, you can get it. But if you don't, there are lots of other communities that are putting plans together to go after this money, and it will leave you behind because no one is helping you get it. And that's why we hire new people to help do this work. Sam's has hired new people to do this work. So our organizations have found money to be able to hire people to come in and say, what do you need? How can we help you? Mm -hmm. So the final thing I'm going to touch on, and then we can be more informal and, and chit chat a little more, is what's on the back page of this resource packet I handed out. So we talked about, we talked at length about Virginia passing money for the Whitewood flood and how we can make that happen. Currently, what's happening is there are a group of senators who are uh, either pushing or not pushing for this budget to be passed. So what we've done is in the middle of the page, we have listed the relevant senators, we have their email address, and we have an email script. You don't have to follow it exactly. This is what we would send if we were emailing them officially. It says, hello, this is me, I was impacted, please vote for this budget because it contains this money that we need. Uh, what we would recommend doing is simply sending one email with all of these senators blind carbon copied on it so you don't have to send multiple emails. Send that out, make sure they're aware of it. On the bottom is a list of House delegates who have already supported this work. We generally like to thank them just to say, we see you and we appreciate what you've done. Um, that incentivizes them to do more in the future. So at the bottom are delegates who have already voted yes and a thank you email template as well. Um, if you want more information on how to contact these legislators and what to say, uh, just reach out to me. I have a stack of cards. I've already handed them out to some people. They have my cell phone number. They have my email. If you call me, uh, I will either pick up or I will call you back within a day. And Amanda can write her contact information on the back too, so you can have that. Sorry, I throw that out there. <laughs> Amanda lives in Tazewell and is closer. Emma lives in Lee County. I live so. two and a half hours away. <laughs> but you can contact Emma and Emma can get to me yes. also. I will let you know, Delegate Moorfield is on the Appropriations Committee. And, and so he, he, and because he's on that specific money committee, is the reason he's been able to get in the budget. Um, these senators, need to hear that you want this money as well, but um, yeah, they need to hear. So? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, uh, the organizers will be sitting around if you all want to talk to us more about anything, but I'm going to conclude this portion in case you all want to go get dinner and go back to your homes. What, what to ask one question. Um, yes. Where do y'all stand in housing and get more cell service? Like when the flood came, mm -hmm. no electricity, no phones, no nothing, mm -hmm. no way to check on my sister, no way to check on my neighbor, no way to get to them, no way. If there was a cell tower, 
we all could have had phones and said, we're okay, you're okay. That would have relieved 10 hours of agony. Well, that may have us listen to this. My sister was oh. off the chart. His sisters doesn't even live here. They, they live in Galax, and his sisters is on the, you're on the television, oh, my brother's missing and his mm -hmm. wife. Which um, they, they had no idea we weren't missing because where we live, there was nobody to get to us. Impossible. So you couldn't have made it to that gym? No. Oh, okay. oh, well, we couldn't no. make it out of the yard. We couldn't make it out of the yard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when it came, there was nothing. Yeah. Nothing. We saved an 88 year old and we sat on a mountain for about 10 flat hours. So 10 till 7. Nobody knew where we were. This happened at 8, 8, 8, 30 in the morning. But there was no way to get nowhere. There was no, there was no communication. They couldn't get to us. We couldn't get to them. And not only that, the thing was, even when people started coming, they didn't know where to go to find the people. Yeah. There was no way. Yeah. A helicopter went over, and all I could do was stand there and pray and, and wave my hands. And the little 88-year-old was saying, are we going to make it? Mm. And I kept saying, yeah, we're going to make it. With God's help. Mm. Because she would have drowned. And Michael went down and got her in the Jeep. We carried her in the house. Then we had to leave the house because everything came against the house. And by the time we got through the house, the water, and I, I'm on a mountain. Now, I'm not down near the creek. I'm on a mountain probably a football field or more from the creek. And from the go out the, my dining room door, just across a patio, the water hit me at my knees. And she says, I can't go. If we go across that, I'm going to be washed over this mountain. I said, no, we're going to cross this. Me and you and my husband's going to cross it. We're going to sit on that mountain out there. And that's exactly, that is a big, big issue. That's the biggest issue we have. There's no communication. There's no way when something goes wrong to have anything. Right. I'll repeat what Taryn said because it was the most powerful thing I think that's been said is you know what you want, people aren't listening to it. And in our line of work, in order to get the things you want, you gotta force people to listen to it. That means you gotta build the power to get them to do it. Our hope was that the, the gym or a church or I don't know, some place that could be accessible, that it has solar and battery, could have a Wi-Fi connection, so no matter, you would be able to go there and make your phone calls or do it because you could connect to the Wi-Fi. Right. Or you could have, we, what we, our, our ideal is to build what are called resilience hubs, spaces that ha are fully equipped to provide what you will need in times of emergency. So water, maybe there's perishable, non-perishable food there, right. there's solar, there's battery, there's Wi-Fi, there's everything a community would need in a time of emergency. This is available. You just show up there because you know that's where you're supposed to go. Um, and so we can we can build that, but what I'm also hearing is that's not enough because you can't, you can't get, get to get it. There. So 911 service doesn't work because that's supposed to work on a satellite, whether there's no... There ain't nothing worked, honey, where we live. Mm -hmm. it's it's too so you tried 911? We, we tried everything. Okay. There, when there was no phones, when there was no electricity, there was no phones, there was nothing. I think the mountains is so high, and you're down mm -hmm. down in there. There's no cell service. And there's, there's no cell service in lots and lots of places. But with the flooding, guess who's for? Like they said, those people, half of them could have washed away and nobody would have never, ever known it for hours and hours. If it had hit at night, it would have been a disaster because nobody would have been able to get out. But there were people that could have stayed in the, in the top of their houses that didn't wash completely away and they could have called. Mm -hmm. They would have been able to call and say, I'm here, I'm still alive, help me, get, get here, you know? No. But, if you don't have anything, how are you going to ever get any help? That seems like there needs to definitely be some legislation to bring the cell towers in. We had a similar situation in Wise County where a baby died in a fire because there was no service. And the cell phones are supposed to, you're supposed to be able to call 911 whether you have a signal or not. And that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. No, it don't happen. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that definitely... I can look into 
something. To I, I think that is a big, big thing in the whole county with the elderly people, even if they're sick, and just by living by themselves, not even a disaster. I think it would help the elderly tremendously to be able to say, you don't have to work the cell phone, you don't have to do anything, you just have to hit 911 and somebody will be there to help you. And we have a lot of elderly people that would be able to get help and somebody to get to them, even, even not with the disasters that we've had. But with those, it's been, I mean, it's, it was just unreal to know my sister's was not even a half a mile from me but I couldn't even go through the mountain to get to them. Mm -hmm. They couldn't come through the mountain to get to mm -hmm. me because of all the hollers. I mean, they were huge, unbelievable. Well, then my one sister said that's moved to Roanoke. She says, you know, I thought the end of time came because with climbing to, she mm -hmm. went, her money, her money, if you went to the top of the mountain, the last words I said to her, she said, we're getting washed away. I said, you go to the top of the mountain, as my daddy said, and you don't stop. Mm -hmm. And she said as she climbed the mountain, the dirt would come up under her feet. And they would keep climbing until they got to the top because they were afraid they were going to get drowned with the mud. Yeah. Not only the trees, the mud and all. Mm -hmm. But she said when we got to the top, we stayed there. And they stayed for about three or four hours. Wow. The water stopped. The rain stopped. They started back down. By that time, there was people from up the road at, toward the top of the mountain where the water was less, had come through the mountains and was hunting for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's a big thing. And she had her cell phone with her. She said, I had a cell phone, but I didn't have any, no way to get a hold of anybody. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing. Thanks for raising that concern. 